is by some person called Lisa Stanley. And she says, what are our beliefs and what is to come after the mother's passing? Well, <clears throat> the mother left the body in 1973. But that's all. She left her body. But her consciousness, when she was in her body, was very intensely concentrated in the ashram. Today, it has diffused itself all over the world. And anyone who is open to her, to that force, whether he recognizes it as the mother and Shravindo or not, will get help from there. So on that, there is no doubt at all. But <clears throat> I can tell you from personal experience that the mother's physical presence was of tremendous help and importance to all of us who or to many of us who are still alive, who have had some kind of personal and intimate contact. And one cannot pretend, yes, the mother is always there, but the physical mother did make a very big difference. At least that is my own experience. <coughs> and now it is it demands a real inner opening because when you want to take a decision, when you have doubts, when you want to know how to react, what to do, right? You have to go in and ask. And you can never be sure. Not you can never be sure. You can be sure whether I have got the real thing or not. When she was there, it was very easy. You could go easily and ask her. And but then one of the things that she said in the last few years of her physical existence, when she reduced the contacts in a very big way, that you must develop that inner contact. And with a little effort and a little sincerity, it is absolutely possible. So I believe that uh, those of us who have had the younger, the uh, inner, I mean, the close contact physically with the mother, and uh, if you are there still, about 25 or 30, right? <clears throat> they, I think, will clearly feel the difference. Those who came late and did not have that intimate contact with the mother, right? But had a contact they will not feel the difference so much. And today, the youngsters who have not seen the mother even once, right, except in photographs, well, they have to make a really big effort. And But anyone who is sincere is bound to arise at that contact. Now, the next thing is <coughs> that in the individual life of a sadhak, of a seeker, wherever he is in the world. He can establish this contact and guide himself according to this. But the problem is that we are all living in a correctivity. Whether in the ashram or outside, you are living in a group. And in a group, it is always a few people who decide for the rest. Right? In a big family, it is so. And the bigger the size, the more complex it becomes. Right? Now, there, to find someone who will represent the mother or even replace the mother and Shirobindo is a far more complicated situation. And uh, it is a very big problem. It cannot easily be solved. Right? Unless the majority of people there in that community have complete trust that the person or persons in charge 
are really in touch with the mother. Then uh, things will move smoothly. When I say mother, I mean divine. Because it can be mother, it can be sure, but no, it can be anybody, right? Otherwise, in collective life, I think it would be safer to use one's reason and to use one's collective reason. It doesn't mean voting, it doesn't mean all the 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 members, but might be they take part in a selection of people who can probably decide and in whom they have trust. Because ultimately, collective life depends entirely on trust. You have trust in the authorities, and the authorities trust that they are doing the very best thing for you individually as well as for the group. So, uh, we are facing this problem with the ashram today, and it is inevitable that it is uh, every institution is facing this problem when the original founders and gurus have gone. In the normal political, economic, social institutions, there they have no even pretend that they are appealing to something higher. They try to solve all their problems by reason. And that is very sensible, and that is very correct. But in an individual life, each one can find out what exactly he has to do or he should do, right? And as I said, this is true even in a family sometimes. And certainly in bigger groups, this is absolutely important. <clears throat> now, if you have any questions on this, you can ask. You... Uh, Donna, do you, do you know who is this person, Lisa Stanley? She's, um, I think she's from the U.S., I'm not sure. She had posted that question on ISTM Facebook, and it wasn't the kind of thing that we um, approve to be put on the page. So and I, t I wrote to her and told her that we would ask you and that we would get back to her with the answer. So yeah. I don't really know anything about her. That's all. And this is very important because these political decisions, you might not agree at all with what your leaders are deciding, no? And, well, you have no choice. The only advantage or the only blessing is that your leaders are elected once in four years or five years. In America, four years. In England, four years. In India, five years. Right? Yeah. So, otherwise, have you any question? Um, any remarks? Any comments? Well, I just wanted to say that um, uh, what you've just said, um, I guess because I lived there for 11 years, so I was a young girl then. And when I left and read several things, even when my uh, mother, I read somewhere, uh, please excuse me, I can't remember the details, but I do know that um, mother had said that, you know, her consciousness is always around. Yes. So I guess it's, um, I, I guess with my background, I don't know how to put it, uh, you know, just that faith yeah. that she's there. She's not visible, so yes. Like a child in the dark, you know, you're looking for your, for for a hand to hold on to. You know the person's there, but you, you you trust that the person's there. You just can't see them, you know. So it is that kind of a feeling. But um, you know, I I just know she's there, and I trust that I might not get the things I want done my way, but whatever is happening, will get. It will. I will get what I want eventually, but not in the manner that I want. I'll, yeah. I'll arrive is the bottom line. Not when yeah. I want. I have to go through certain things, but I will arrive. So I've, I've trust that faith. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, it is so difficult to find somebody to, uh, you know, in mother's physical absence, 
um, yeah. to where to go, who to ask. It's always you have to go back to her. Yes. For you, I mean, inside you, and even around you and above you, she's mm -hmm. there. And when one is really in trouble and one is sincere in one's uh, asking, you always get the answer. And then when it comes, it is unmistakable. Hmm. So this is one of the questions, right? And the I'll take the third question now. What is the best way to read Shurabindu's writings? This is a girl from India by name Geeta. Now, this, I'll tell you exactly what the mother had said. The mother had said that read Shrabindo little at a time. Not more than half an hour to start with. At the beginning. And then it might be one or two paragraphs. Read slowly with full concentration. Not that you are watching TV and reading and eating and reading. Read very slowly and and she told me personally once that after reading, let it be absorbed into you. Don't let your mind be active for some time. And then afterwards, put down in writing, either in points or in writing, what you think, uh, what Sri had said, and what you have understood. Then you go back again to the text, and then you'll find that probably I have missed out some points, or I have overstressed some points. See, now this is a thing that you have to continually practice. But for me, somehow, I fell passionately, began to read him, at the age of 18. And I was reading Sri on himself, which is much easier than any other of his works. And that had a terrific impact on me. And then I used to go on reading. And then by the time I was 17 years old, mother gave me in her own, with her own signature, almost all the books of Sri the letters, the, everything. So that was a very clear indication to me that you can spend. And I have uh, spent five to six hours a day, almost for the last 50 years, reading either Mother or reading Shrabindo. And now I read nothing else. I read the newspaper in five minutes. I see the TV in 10 minutes. And I take up the Sudoku, which I find a very interesting challenge. That might be half an hour. But the rest of the time when I am free, if I am not taking classes, and all my classes are centered around Shura window. Or the model. So, I am in good company. That much I can say, tell you. <laughs> so, but for the beginners, it is better not to read too much at a time. Secondly, his English is not easy. It is, for many Indians who's, uh, who study in their vernacular language, it is very difficult. So therefore, read slowly. Try to understand the meaning of every word, if necessary. Go to the dictionary frequently. A dictionary will help you, but it might not give you the finer points. Because the same word in English can mean four or five things in different contexts, right? So you have to develop this language. And translations are good, but uh, no translation can replace Shrivinder's own words. So anyway, you better start slowly, and then as you begin to enjoy him, and if possible fall in love with him, then you will find that really it will open out. This word, to be in love with Shrivinder is very important, because then you identify with him. Because love is nothing else but identification. And when that identification takes place, then there is, it becomes very, very much easier. Even in a part of the being, even in a small part of the being, it becomes very much easier. 
Well, any other question on this? I'll just add that even being uh, English as the primary language, he's still hard to read. He's real hard to read. Yeah. But I can assure you that if you read him and read him and read him, your English will improve like anything. In fact, somebody asked me today, this morning, how is it that you speak and write such good English? I said it is plain and simple because of Shwabindu. I have studied the classes, I was a reasonably good student, but that means nothing. But when you read Shwabindu and read him and read him, you will find that the words are so perfectly chosen. Not one word is out of place. And the subtleties are fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. So, if nothing else, read as much as you can. If you have the time, one hour, two hours, if possible even more, right? Instead of reading on films and newspapers and TVs, right? This is a very good company. <clears throat> and I managed to persuade some adults who have been here for 50, 60 years to start reading Sri Aurobindo, and they are doing it at the age of 60s. But they are beginning to enjoy and something is opening out which is absolutely independent of me. Okay. So that is the second question. Okay. Thank you. Now, the, yeah, if you have any question, you ask me any comment. Or shall I move on? Please move on. So the next question is, how can one stay away from doing the incorrect things, even under pressure from colleagues? Should one stand up, say no, and make more enemies in the workplace? Or subtly say no, and even then get them to suspect loyalty anyway? It is tricky. So I think the answer here is, your first loyalty and ultimately only loyalty must be to the divine. Now when you are working in a company, right, naturally you are working with many people. Naturally you cannot tell your boss that my inner being tells me this, I will not do that. You have to learn to live with other people. Unless it goes radically against what you think is your deeper call, try to make up, try to adjust, but don't worry about the loyalty to others. And I can assure you that when you are loyal to your highest part of your being, even if they refuse at the moment, they will accept it very soon. And very often you will find that without talking, you get that acceptance. But you must be sure that you are in the line of truth. See? This is a very subtle thing. And that's why I tell all my friends who are working in groups, in departments, in heads of, that be loyal entirely to the mother. Don't disrespect those who are below you. Unless they do something which is radically contrary to truth, according to your vision. But be sure that you are right. Until then, bide your time. See, that certitude can be a sign of arrogance, and that certitude can also be absolutely the right thing to do. That fine line is not very easy to find out. But everything comes by practice. As Mother says, practice gives skill. So, so this skill of finding out what is the right thing, again is a matter of going on trying, making mistakes, correcting yourself, making mistakes. And the important thing is, when you make mistakes, correct yourself. You don't have to tell others. You have to tell yourself that I've been wrong. And that's why I advise everyone that if you write down in your notebook the things that are likely 
that are going wrong within you, whether other people know or not, it will help you to become conscious and gradually move on towards the right line. So in any case, loyalty always should be to your inmost being, whatever that is, whether it is psychic or the higher mind, doesn't matter. Be true to yourself. And in, in most places, it is sometimes a little difficult. In the army, it is much easier, generally. That is, that is what is said. Although you are expected to obey, you can, in a small meeting, tell exactly your position. And I have seen this happening, where a junior officer told his senior in the discussion that, Sir, I don't agree with you at all, but since you are the boss, I will obey you under any cost. So the boss said that, look, I have knowledge of many more things than you have, because I have got many more inputs. But when you come to my position, which you will come within two or three or five years, then you act according to what you think is right. So that keeps the discipline going, that keeps your independence going, and you move, gradually move upward in consciousness. And as you move upward in consciousness, mm. you will find that you need to talk less and give less orders and your commands will be easily accepted and very silently accepted, very powerful. But that is always a matter of consciousness. So the whole day must be spent in trying to raise the consciousness. It comes down, again start. It comes down, again start. And if this goes on for days, for months, you will immediately start seeing the result. And in years, you will be unable to believe that I was like this, and today I am like this. And so there is no end to progress. So any other question on this? That's a good example to use the Army, and to use, instead of instant gratification, you, you have the three to five year up attitude that when I'm in that yeah. place, then I can respond in a different way than my boss would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But one thing you must always remember, that the boss has more inputs and more experience than you. So do not be overconfident, but surely state your position. Hmm. But once the order has been given, you must follow it faithfully. There's a very important. There's a um, I don't know where the saying comes from, but it's something to the to the um, point of the laborer is has to be worthy of his hire. When you're hired to do something, when yeah. you're, when you're picked to do something, you do it. And if you don't want to do it anymore, you have to leave because somebody's yeah. paying you to do that job. And you have to do that job to the best of your ability, or leave. Absolutely. And then there is one more question, <clears throat> that is, what, what way does the mother say is correct in handling money? I have sent that note to Nana on money. You will find it in the book called The Mother in the second chapter, there's a whole chapter on money, but even for one who is not doing sadhana, he must remember that money is a force, which, like three forces which hold the human being, money, power, and sex. And with money, you can get both power and sex. Power will help you to get money and also the satisfaction of sex. These are very powerful instruments of the lower nature and unfortunately in most cases they dominate the human being. That is why many sadhanas reject power. Be very humble, be very simple. Right? Be a beggar. 
they reject money. They don't touch money. They are afraid of money. And they don't see, look at girls because they are afraid of girls. Nothing is solved. Everything is inside there, right? To blame a girl that you are attracted shows that something is wrong with you and not with the girl, right? So this is a very nasty comment when you make about women, right? The problem is inside you. You have to handle it straightforward. If you feel that for the time being I should keep away, keep away. But don't blame her. It is you who are in the, in the fault, right? And then gradually you develop the inner strength by which you can easily handle, right? So similarly, money also is a power which you must be scrupulous in handling. And mother used to keep her accounts to the pie when she was actively involved in the ashram. And then gradually she handed it over to the secretaries. To the pie every day things would be kept. Not a single pie would be wasted. Not a single pie would be reserved. And if necessary she would be able to spend. I know one lady who had to go to Sweden because she had some problem. At that time, in the 1950s, she spent 30,000 rupees. Today it will be 30 lakh rupees. Right? But she had no hesitation. But when somebody asked for something which he thought was not necessary, is it point blank? No. Right? So money is the important thing is that you must you must have money, but you must dominate money. Money must not dominate you. Right? And that is in ordinary life also, mm. and absolutely so in spiritual life. And it's a tremendous power. It can destroy you completely, mm. right? And you will see all this corruption that is taking place today is because people can be bought. You give them some money and they will come over, right? And this is widely prevalent in politics and economics, right, and in journalism, where they will deliberately write something against you or deliberately suppress something against you or for you, right. So <clears throat> that, that is a very tremendous power, but the usual tendencies like for sadhus don't touch, don't touch money. But fortunately we have got two sadhus in our country today. Narendra Modi, who is not officially a sadhu, but the UP's chief minister is Yogi Adityanath. He calls himself Yogi Adityanath, and he is a yogi. Okay. And he is handling the biggest state in the country, yeah. which runs mm -hmm. into crores and crores of rupees. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so far he has been true as a very clean person, no, no corruption whatsoever. Right? And it is very strict. So that's a very, very useful thing. I think India is, is fairly lucky now that we are getting more and more ministers who are handling money well rather than being handled by money. Yeah. And in the last three years, there has not been a single scam. Not even one paisa has gone wrong. And it would be in the government, you should be very careful. Because if it is found out, you will be out of the government immediately. And you will be public, publicly humiliated. So that is, so at least that is the one great advantage that we have today. But money should be handled everywhere, even in, in your own private money. You should keep regular accounts. Know what you are spending. Uh, sometimes you have to do some things more than you think is necessary for your children. doesn't matter, do it, right? But then gradually bring them into the habit of spending that which is necessary and that which is good for them and not being miserly. See, neither running away from money nor being possessed by money. Mm -hmm. uh, handle crores of rupees but be master of those crores of rupees. Mm. And for that you don't need crores. If you can master 10,000 rupees 
or 10 lakh rupees. The same principle will apply on a higher and higher scale. You can get any amount. Nothing will go wrong. Yeah. And, and if you are working for the divine, always seek for the divine. What it wants you to do, what it doesn't want you to do. And then you develop your consciousness and your guidance from there. And you can... But under all conditions, accounts must be kept. Even if it is your private account. At least you should know it. That's all. Yeah. It helps one being true to oneself. In yes, all, absolutely. In all, at all levels. At all levels. Yeah. And this is on the vital level. So it is starting from there. Vital physical, in fact, right? Mm -hmm. Do you need a really thicker mattress than what you've got? Do you need an easy chair? Because all your life you've sat on a straight chair, but now you're getting old, so you would like to sit a little more comfortably. Um, well, you have to be, don't be rigid. If it is necessary and if it is for your good, do it by all means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because money at the end of the day is nothing but an energy. And it's a, yes. a necessary energy, but like you said, it must not take you over. You must take it, it, it for what it is and use it accordingly. Absolutely. So you must be the master of money, but, and I think from that point of view, I'm being a little partial probably, women are very good. True. <laughs> uh, generally, women are better than men. <laughs> John wouldn't agree, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's all that matters. <laughs> Very true, very true though. That's probably because women haven't had as much money as men have. So the the money that they get, they try to protect. Well, you have to live <laughs> life with what you have got and not yeah. what. Yeah. You, you can't get what you want, you <laughs> always get. And then you have to learn to tell, cut your cord according to your. I, I, I all, I've always believed in that because that's how I grew up. I came from a very large family. So, yeah. you know, as and when necessary. As and when necessary. Necessary. <laughs> and then as you grow up, I remember when I first started earning money at that drive to squirrel some away for when I wanted something. So whatever I wanted, I'm satisfied. So now if I... If it suddenly wakes up, it's like a test, and I think, no, don't need it now. Been there, done that, move on, you know? Yeah, yep, And absolutely. that's it. <clears throat> that is why I'm very happy that today India's defense minister is a lady. Okay. Because, you see, the defense part is being handled by the chiefs, army chiefs, all three, army, air force. But the commercial part, buying equipment, getting equipment, and uh, she can be trusted 100%. Okay. See, because she, she was the Commerce Minister. Uh, so she she will do that part. Of course, she will be in touch with the defense also. But uh, she will leave it mainly to the armed forces. Mm. So I think it's a very good move. And today in the top five or six, there are three ladies in Indian government. Sriti Irani, Nirmala Sitaraman, and Shushma Swaraj, mm. Foreign Minister, Minister of Textiles and other things, and the Defense Minister. Mm. Very key positions. Mm. It's, a, it's a very healthy sign because I think women should be given uh, not only their due, in fact, they are sometimes far better than men mm. in their work. Hmm. Right. So that's it. All the questions that have come have been answered. So within the next two weeks, uh, I think Kavita will send me all the other questions that come up. And this once in two weeks is a very healthy thing. 
I think it gives you time to absorb and uh, you can read what I'm mm -hmm. proposing now to you, right? And then Donna will have time to edit and put it up on the YouTube, right? And then many other people will follow it. Yeah. yeah. So that's a happy thing. Yeah. I'd like to ask you a question, Kittuza. Ask me, sure. I, I keep on wondering, how do you manage to find out the, the, the answers uh, that are, you know, that the questions that are being put to you, how do you find the answers? Because it's not sort of one book of Mother and Sri Aurobindo where, you know, it, it needs a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge to know exactly I, where to look. See, I've been very lucky in this sense that I'll, today I'm 82, 81 in fact. I started reading Mother and Sri Aurobindo passionately from the age of 18. Just reverse 81, it becomes 18. Right? <laughs> and from that day onwards, five hours, six hours, four hours, depending, wherever I am, I have been reading them, reading them, reading them. It has become part of my bloodstream. Wow. I mean, if you if a drop of blood falls, you, if you have got the eyes, you'll see sure with the other mother's name written there. <laughs> There was uh, and it happened. It is not that I made an effort. It just happened. Mm. I liked reading them and I enjoyed them. I've got a book right now here, Volume 4 of The Mother, okay. right? Complete works of The Mother. I have read the first three again. Now I'm doing four. I'm reading them all over again. Mm. And every, every time I read it is fresh. It is new. Yeah. So it's, that's what you call passion. Yeah, there is, it is a passion. Yeah. There's also something that um, it's called the author's cogito, and when you read Mother and Sri Aurobindo, you become you come in contact with their consciousness. Of course, because you've read their words. So having done it for as long as you have, that that has influenced, like you said, your drops of blood mm. have been influenced by them. Yeah, very much. As I said, if you, if you can read my a drop of blood, you will find their name there. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And it will happen to you. I can see the enthusiasm that you have got. And I tell you, in another 10 years, you will be exactly in that state. Yeah, yeah, you will be well. You, you are happy, and therefore you will be well. Mm, that that is so true. That is so true. You have to be happy in all circumstances. There are moments of sorrow and depression. Yeah. But but don't let them overwhelm you. Mm. Just like money, don't let them ride you. You're in charge. Yeah. That's yeah. what I. That's a uh, that's a daily conversation with my daily conversation with myself <laughs> when I feel <laughs> down or whatever. I say, oh, come on, because in the morning when I do my little prayer, my uh -huh. little puja that uh, I have, and yeah. I say good morning to the mother and Sri Aurobindo. I do my pranam, and I the, the day started well. So even if I dive dive down, I know that I'm big stuff. I'm being held, but it's up to me to pull myself up because I can't always say, here, hold me up while I sink, kind of yeah. thing. Got to make an effort, kind of, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. You make your effort, she'll do the rest. Absolutely. Got to do something for myself. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Oh, great, great. Well, so that's it. So we meet next on October 1st, okay. which is su okay. Sunday. All right. Sunday. That'll be a good start to the month.